So how can we make productionizing machine learning as fast and easy as building something like a dashboard uh, on a warehouse? Feature stores are, are built exactly for this, right? They're the hub for a data flow and a machine learning application. And they're focused on solving these data complexities for putting ML applications into production. So they do a bunch of things like ensuring transformations are consistently applied across environments, organizing data for use in ML, and making feature data accessible for online inference and offline training, and monitoring this data and keeping it validated. The most important thing, though, is offering a very simple workflow for teams to quickly iterate between development and production with their data. So the feature store does this not by duplicating your data stack, but by integrating with it and extending it to provide data workflows and interfaces for ML developers. We believe that those workflow implications of feature stores are more impactful than any other component in the ML stack. And they're critical if we want to make ML as easy as common analytic workflows today. So online training is you can learn from each incoming data point. And it has a lot of, uh, uh, it's very difficult to do because it's, it can suffer from catastrophic forgetting. I talked to several companies they have tried doing it and none of it ever worked. Um, and it can get very, very expensive because like, imagine you have some hardware that can so this cable of doing um, computations on like a lot of samples at the same time. So if you use that hardware to make the computation on only one sample that can get very, very expensive and wasteful. So the companies have seen that doing online learning are uh, successful in, in practice. They do they learn in micro batches. So instead of learning with every incoming sample, they they learn with every coming like uh, 500 or 1000 of samples. I should say this is this is the uh, favorite picture of Demetrius. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm hoping it's timeless. But um, in our experience, given a choice, uh, data scientists would prefer to sort of stay atop the stack as much as possible. They probably don't want to spend too much time thinking about the software architecture or, or probably having strong opinions about the right choice of infrastructure integrations, but definitely want to spend a lot of their time thinking about feature engineering and model operations, um, as Jan, Jan mentioned a while ago. Conversely enough, in fact, this is where the role of us as machine learning infrastructure add, can add a lot of value. We could probably take care of all the heavy lifting required to translating the data scientist intent of a machine learning workflow and getting it to run safely and reliably in production, integrating with all the relevant layers in the stack uh, to do so. We could also afford to be quite strongly opinionated at the lower levels of the stack and probably build a lot of software engineering best practices so that all our data scientists can get them for free. We actually define the five pillars of data observability. And we believe that, and what we're seeing in, in, um, in the market is that companies and data teams that are actually very diligent about how, how they think about data observability are able to get a strong view of the health of their data. Now, I'm not talking particularly about the health of the pipelines itself. I'm talking about the health of the data that's running the, running the pipelines, the data that we're actually relying on. We sort of call this the, the good pipelines, bad data problem. Oftentimes we'll have sort of a job that's completed, everything looks fine, but actually the data is you know, all wrong or has been late or is all, has all null values suddenly we're surprised by that. How do you actually uh, detect those issues and be the first to know them? How do you make sure that you are ahead of the game uh, in the sense that when you identify that there's a problem, you can also trace the root cause and identify what led to that problem? How can you quickly answer questions like who's impacted by these problems? Um, who's impacted by this, um, by this data that's stale or inaccurate? So specifically, some of these data, the data observability pillars are um, freshness, which helps us determine whether the data is up to date or not. Um, distribution, what helps us understand at the field level are the values of the data that I'm expecting accurate. Um, a volume, meaning is the amount of data or sort of are, are the, or is the amount of data that I'm um, expecting, um, you know, in line with historical rates. For example, if I'm used to getting, you know, 1 million rows and suddenly I'm getting 5 million or 6 million rows, um, you know, is something wrong. Um, the fourth is schema, which helps us understand the structure of the data. Um, you know, if there's a field that's added or removed or changed in type um, and is often a culprit of data problems. 
um, and lineage, which, help, which helps us tie all of this together and answer questions around tracing and root cause and provides context to a problem. So say if a table was typically um, uh, um, updating every three hours and suddenly stops updating, and there's a number of machine learning models that rely on that table, that table probably is very important. Uh, and you wanna make sure that um, you know, you're aware of how often it's updated and that it's updated on time. What if there was a table that had no dependencies? Maybe you don't care about that one. In that case, you wouldn't even need to know about, um, about that incident. And so thinking about these five pillars of, the, of observability helps us understand the health of our system and be the first to know about data problems, um, be able to troubleshoot them with, with rich context about them and be able to, to resolve those faster. I've noticed at least on LinkedIn and how people hire is really ML engineers. I feel like I like there's a little bit of like championing for the person who who actually, you know, takes that model and puts it in the real world. That's a hard job. You know, it's it's you know, it's almost like you got to know how the models build, what it's trying to optimize for. And then you also got to know all of the software infrastructure to go make that successful in the real world. And I, I feel like when I, I remember when we were you know, we had ML engineers at Uber and, you know, that was kind of felt like a new role. It was like, you know, maybe one of the first couple of companies to actually do it. And now you go look on LinkedIn and like every fintech, you know, has ML engineers. 